Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I have another what sold on eBay video for you. Today I'm going to be showing you guys about 13 different items that have sold over on my public eBay store in the last two weeks. Now as always, this is not everything that has sold on my store by any means. This is just a good variety of items that I think will help you guys out in your own reselling business and hopefully help you guys learn a thing or two about some new items. But before we jump into that, I got this week's positive comment shout out. It goes to thrifting in New England who's said thank you for showing the different items in thrift stores along with the clothing and I appreciate what not to buy just as much as what to buy it all helps thank you for the comment I appreciate the support and I'm glad you think the what not to buy is just as helpful I completely agree it helps you sift through inventory a lot faster when you can just pass up items really fast and if any of you guys out there would like to be next week's positive comment shout out leave a comment on this video of something that you learned from it or what your favorite item was that sold also remember to like and subscribe now let's hop into the video all right here we have our first item this is a Nvidia GTX Titan 4k graphics card for a lot of you this is probably a space that you're not familiar with computer parts are something that is hard to learn but it is very very profitable if you learn what to look for I bought this card on Facebook marketplace for $100 and ended up flipping it in three days for $350. If you're new to computer parts and have never sold this kind of stuff before or you don't know much about it, I definitely recommend that you start out small and learn like computer memory and RAM first, then move your way up into graphics cards and power supplies and processors and stuff like that but it is definitely a profitable field for you to get into. When I saw this pop up, I hopped on it instantly and I made sure I'd message him, ask if it worked. Even if this didn't work at the price I paid at $100, I could have sold this for parts and still made money on it, but I got it home, tested it, everything worked fine. The only thing wrong with this specific card was that it was missing the mounting bracket right here on the front and that's because it was on a server. I assume he was using it to mine stuff like Bitcoin, Litecoin, stuff like that. But anyways, it ended up working sold it in three days for a great great profit again if you don't know computer parts start out slow but it's definitely something for you to look into this next time is a little sneak peek into the next video this is a lot of manga that i ended up picking up at salvation army i paid 25 cents per book and this is one of the sets that i picked up it's pokemon adventures black and white you can see there's a set of nine different books here and this sold in 24 hours for a best offer of $89.99, so 90 bucks, and that is what you call an awesome flip. If you don't know manga, I've talked about it before on my channel, it's super hot right now. Anime stuff is selling very, very well, and it's definitely something to learn. It's right up there with video games and everything like that right now, so learn your manga. If you see it, look it up, the sets are probably worth something. And this wasn't the only set I picked up, so make sure to keep an eye out for this in the next video. Here's that pair of double rainbow strap Chacos that I picked up in Goodwill. This was an awesome find. If you guys don't know Chacos, learn this brand right now. Here's what the logo looks like. They are very, very high quality sandals. People use them for hiking and uh, boating and kayaking, stuff like that. They have a very good following and people swear by them, so they always sell fast, new or used. This particular pair was brand new without the tag. You could tell that they'd never been used. I showed it on the video and they sold for $70. I picked these up for like five or 10 bucks at that Goodwill. Next up, we have a jersey. This is a Seattle Sounders inaugural season jersey. This one was a great find. I found it on the Valparaiso trip about two months ago when I went up and helped my friend move. Found this in a thrift store up there. I paid like five bucks for it. Flipped it for $75. I sold this jersey a couple times now. This is my first time selling it in the long sleeve format, but it was an awesome jersey. If you see soccer jerseys in general, they're gonna have a good value behind them. This specific one had a couple different reasons to why it was more valuable. One, it was the inaugural season, so it's a little bit of a rare jersey. Two, it was a long sleeve jersey, which makes it a little bit harder to find. And three, it has a crossover between video games and sports, which are two very, very competitive fields when it comes to people looking for items. As you can see, uh, it had Xbox 360 across the chest, which crosses it over into the video games category. Anytime you can link two categories together and cross things over, like video games and sports in this instance, it's going to increase the price and increase the amount of eyes that are on your item because that is more people that are looking for this kind of stuff. So keep an eye out for jerseys and keep an eye out for things that will cross over into multiple markets. 
Here we have another thrift store find. This is a Rawlings first baseman mitt. If you're not familiar with softball and baseball equipment, I definitely recommend you at least familiarize yourself with how to look this kind of stuff up. Almost all of the gloves and mitts are gonna have a model number on them somewhere. So if we go and zoom in on the pictures here, we can see that this specific model number was right where the fingers meet the palm of the hand. On a lot of gloves, you're gonna see it more down here towards where the base of the palm is. That's the number that you're gonna to wanna to type into eBay to find the results to see what the gloves are worth. Now typically a first baseman mitt or a catcher's mitt is going to have more value than a normal regular baseball glove. And an easy way to tell at a glance if something is a catcher's mitt or a first baseman mitt is simply by looking at the design of the glove. You can see that this does not have the individual fingers in it, which is a telltale sign that's either gonna be a catcher's mitt or a first baseman's mitt. In the video when I found this, you might've seen me look it up in the store. I said that there was one sold listing, there were none currently listed on eBay, and the one that had sold was in better condition than mine and it still sold for 70 bucks. I figured, hey, since mine's the only one on eBay at the time, I'm gonna list this one for 70 bucks and it sold for full price in under a week. Here's a bolo that I've talked about before, but it's been a while. This is a Radica big screen solitaire handheld game. Now this one has the backlight and it's the white and yellow version, but there are other versions that are worth this much as well. But this kind of stuff you can find all the time at thrift stores and garage sales. It's very easy to find this kind of stuff and people do not price them high at all. You can typically find them for one or two dollars and this one sold for forty dollars in under a week. People still use these all the time and the ones you want to look for are the ones that are backlit so they can be used at nighttime and the ones that are large so that people can see them. There is some great value here and if you can find these new in the box, they actually sell upwards of like 90 bucks. So make sure you keep an eye out for these at your garage sales and thrift stores. Like I said, I pick them up all the time. They are definitely an item that you do not want to sleep on. Okay, sweater weather is starting to roll around. It's getting colder out and people are stocking up on their sweaters. Now one thing to look for with sweaters is cashmere. I talk about cashmere sweaters pretty often and that's because they are such a good seller for me and I can't stress that enough. Even the lower end brands like Land's End and stuff like that are going to have like a $20 value. This one on the other hand is a Theory Cardigan cashmere sweater which sold for $44.95, so 45 bucks. Here's what the tag for Theory looks like. It's a good brand all around, not just in their sweaters but it's a good brand for their dresses and their shirts and stuff as well. Adding on the fact that this was a cashmere sweater, I knew it was an Insta buy when I saw it at Salvation Army for like seven bucks, so keep an eye out for theory stuff, keep an eye out for cashmere stuff. This stuff is gonna be selling hot as we move into the colder months, and it's definitely something that you should look for in your own thrift stores. All right, here's a weird little item. This is a vintage GE Timatan sun lamp. I had never seen one of these before. A bunch of you guys in the comments were intrigued by this, so I figured I'd throw it in this video. It was a pretty cool piece. You kind of turn this dial and the bright light would go on. The light bulb worked on this one, and I assume people used it to get a tan. Here's the model number on this one right here, the RSK-6. Cool little piece, found it in Salvation Army and flipped it within three days of me listing it for $55. I had no idea that these would be in such high demands, but apparently they are. So be on the lookout for these. They are definitely on my radar now. This is a great example of why I tell people they should look up things. This thing probably had a bunch of people walk by it and not realize that there was some kind of value behind it. But because I took the time to look this thing up, I turned an easy $7 into $55, no problem. All right, these were in a video about three weeks ago. These are Disney Mickey and Minnie Bride and Groom bobbleheads. I thought they were a little interesting. You know, Disney stuff sells, bobbleheads have a collector market so I figured this was another good crossover item ended up looking them up and they ended up having some value I believe I paid like three bucks or five bucks a piece on these and ended up selling them for forty dollars these ones did have a little bit of wear as you can see the faces were a bit faded and it had a little bit of marking and scuffing on them not too big of a deal made sure to mention it in the listing but stuff like this like I said before crossover items have a good collector's market. So that's why I looked these up and ended up making a pretty good sale. So if you see these guys sitting around at a yard sale, pick them up. All right, this item here I put in because I haven't talked about it in a while, but it is a great bolo for those of you who are just hopping into the reselling game. This kind of stuff flips super quick over on eBay. This is a toner cartridge for printers. If you don't know about ink and toner cartridges, definitely something to look at. If they are brand new, there's probably some kind of value behind them. 
This one was a HP 304A, as we can see right here on the box. I picked this up at Salvation Army for about five bucks, I believe, and flipped it in under an hour for $55. This kind of stuff you can find at garage sales and yard sales too, so keep an eye out for your ink and toner. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about this one, but in case you're new to reselling, this is definitely something to have on your radar. Here we have our last clothing piece. This is an Adidas Bill Walton basketball jersey. Now the reason that I picked these up originally was because at the garage sale there were four of the exact same jersey. Three of them had tags, this one did not so I sold it as used. Sold it for $50 but the reason I put this one in this list was because of the size. As you can see right here, this is a 4XL basketball jersey. Now large size jerseys sell extremely well but it's not only jerseys, it's larger clothing in general. There's not as much of it listed on eBay so the markets aren't as flooded. So if you see these larger sizes in jerseys and sweaters and hoodies, it might be worth looking up because a lot of that stuff sells very fast because there's simply less of it listed on the site. Now this specific jersey wouldn't have been hurt if it was a smaller size because Bill Walton UCLA jerseys aren't super common, but it being a 4XL didn't hurt it in this case, and a lot of people seem to steer away from larger size clothing, but I do really well with it. So if you see larger clothing, don't shy away, look it up and see if there's any value behind it. Here's our last item. This is a couple of brand new sealed Xbox 360 controllers. This was a Facebook Marketplace pickup I picked them up for $60 ended up selling them for a best offer of $180 but the reason that I picked these up wasn't necessarily because of the price it was because of the packaging I had never seen this specific packaging for Xbox controllers before I'm assuming this was some kind of special deal at like a Sam's Club or a Costco where it was like a bulk pricing kind of thing but when I looked these up there weren't any listed on eBay, there weren't any sold on eBay. I couldn't even find pictures of this on the internet. So I knew it was something a little bit rare. Now how I ended up coming up with a price for these was that I looked up individual new controllers for Xbox 360 and they were selling for around 60 to 75 bucks. So I put it on the high end at $75 times two would have been $150, and I figured since this was a rare package, a collector might buy it, so I priced it a little higher, and I put the price at $200, hoping that a collector would be willing to pay that extra 50 bucks for this unique packaging, and I wasn't necessarily wrong. I was able to get $180 out of it, which is $30 more than what I would have got if these controllers were new individually sealed. And that just shows how little quirky things like differences in packaging can really affect the price on certain products to collectors. Xbox 360 controllers are not hard to find, even brand new. You can still find brand new cases of them out there pretty easily, but this one being a rare packaging might have sparked some interest in there and I knew I could capitalize on that. So the thing I want you guys to take away from this specific listing is look for little quirky things that might have an edge on other listings on the platform. Those little quirks might have some value behind them and in this case, it definitely did. And that's gonna wrap things up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment of what you learned or what your favorite item was in this video. Otherwise, thank you for watching as always, keep on treasure hunting. Peace.